right this is going to be my review of the first episode of rings of power season two so if you hear any noises in the background it's because i'm in my living room and the windows are open but without further ado we will get cracking season one i was a little disappointed with there were some really good bits and some blooming awful bits and overall it was very mediocre and, and just lacked something but anyway moving into season two open mind open heart rings of power season two episode one was called elven kings under sky there was a recap of the previous season which as i've said was a bit meh however we go into the new season and it opens with a flashback we have the original Sauron we're in the frozen fortress of forward Waif, and Sauron is giving this speech about how he is going to take over from Morgoth he's the new king Adar has the crown and he's going to crown Sauron Morgoth's crown minus the Silmarils and so it's just this sort of nasty piece of heavy iron Sauron's waiting to receive it and Adar is about to put it on Sauron's head turns the tables stabs him with that iron crown but the next thing that happens is orcs all have a go with the uh, stabbing and the killing of, of Sauron and then as they're leaving his body to uh, bleed out the blood sort of turns into this goo and so we get Sauron goo and it slips into the rocks and underground i liked the idea of the evil seeping into the ground itself and then it gets hold of um, rats and some pretty crawlies feeding on their energy and slowly becoming more solid and so it's almost like he's re-evolving I, I quite liked that and then he's sour on blob thing gets to the surface and it comes out and it somehow gets across a cart and attaches itself and unfortunately there's a poor old deer in there and she's gonna get eaten and then when we next see Songa Sauron Goo he's Halbrand. One of the things about the Ainu which are the Valor and the Maya is they can change they can be anything like going back to the Sauron killing scene I did like the music and adding to the tension and building everything up to that point. That whole explosion thing where it like, says ripples throughout the world. Uh, I thought it was also symbolic because Sauron's actions are going to send ripples through the whole world anyway. So we have our Halbrand. He's wandering the world and then he meets this old boy. And he's full of wisdom and it's almost like he takes... How brand Sauron under his wing a little bit and, and gives him guidance and perhaps you see the sort of signs of Sauron considering repentance but then they get on this ship now the thing that came to my mind was where were they trying to go to because they talked about a land in the west are they talking about the island of Numenor or are they talking about Valinor or the Undying Lands so it's, it's, it's really quite vague as to where those people were trying to get to on the ship now if they were trying to get to Valinor that makes a lot of sense that that sea creature would be trying to stop them because mortals aren't meant to go to Valinor there's an absolutely valid reason for them not to go unless there's a, a special invite <laughs> that old boy really liked him he is the epitome of wisdom and hope for the future perhaps if Halbrand had embraced that a little bit he, he could have turned things around he had a chance Eru likes to give people a lot of chances to reform look how many chances he gave Morgoth yeah. but that's another story this boat obviously it gets attacked by the sea creature which Halbrand seems to sense he knows it's coming now does he know it's coming because he thinks it's after him or does he know it's coming because he knows where they're trying to get to so what the old boy says to him you have to choose to be good until it starts to just being good you have to make those good choices until it becomes part of you if you want to build up a good habit you've got to 
choose that good habit each time until eventually that habit becomes part of you that good habit becomes second nature yes so this creature it is said that to stop mortals getting to valinor on the undying lands that there are sea creatures and enchantments and things to stop them getting there so another thing is if there are these sea creatures who might have sent them and that might have been either ulbo or even sauron himself or there are some maya who work for ulmo and they could have sent it but actually that one of them could have been the sea creature who knows Darren does seem remorseful but of course he takes the uh, not so good route and uh, steals the pouch and leaves the poor old guy to drown and then this is allegedly when he meets galadriel as she's swimming away from the ship that was flowing into valinor i, I didn't think very much of that chase with elrond and galadriel i think that chase to me, didn't work. It was just a bit silly. The audience with Gil Gallad, again, I didn't rate that. That could have been done a lot better. I quite like Elrond's suspicion of the rings. I must admit, I, I like this idea. At first, he's reluctant. They're they're tainted. They could have Sauron's influence on them, and I, can I totally get that because also, to me, it harks back to him probably remembering as a child. What happened with the, with his mum and dad and the sons of Feanor and the, him trying to get the Silmarils back and what happened with that. So I would think there that you've got a little bit of that past trauma creeping in from what happened to Elrond as a child. Elrond, chip off his mother's block, decides to jump off the waterfall with all three rings, you know, like the Silmarils, and goes to find Círdan. And here I was just so happy to meet Círdan for the first time. Círdan has been a much anticipated character. I just felt he was the perfect Círdan. He, he really was. Also the Grey Havens. It was so much more simpler. There was mainly boatyards. It wasn't this huge city with keys and great buildings around it. No, this was a, a humble, simple place. And Círdan struck me as this humble, simple person. He's meant to be the oldest elf in Middle Earth. And he, you know, he's longing to go into the West and he can't because he's promised the Valar that he will remain until every elf that wants to leave can leave. Let me move into Adar and the Orcs putting their stamp on Mordor. You've got Adar and his throne. Hey, I'm the king of the Orcs. Or meant to be the father of the Orcs because Obviously, Adar means father. You've then got Halbran showing up, handing himself in. And immediately, he's trying to manipulate the orcs. He's telling Adar, Sauron is uh, hanging about in uh, Eregion. And, uh, of course, this is going to wind him up because they all believe that Adar killed Sauron. Adar's like, just to be sure, we ought to go and check this out, which completely plays into Halbrand's hands and Halbrand says well if I'll swear allegiance to you but um if you let me go and find out whether he's there so in the meantime he's uh, had a little dark speech chat with one of the wargs so as he's leaving that wardrick who put the key in and caused Mordor to be created with the volcano he, he gets his comeuppance because uh, warg uh, finishes him off as uh, Halbrand is leaving we all know Halbrand is off to Irregio. Now we get to the stranger scenes. He's travelling with Nori into Rune and they're sort of wandering about the desert and they seem to be getting themselves totally lost. I, I don't know why we need the half foots really and they're quite cute and, but I just don't think they enrich the story very much. But anyway we've got half foots we have to deal with them. And so the stranger has this dream sequence, which is probably like a download, which is giving him information on how he needs to proceed to find out who he is and what he's meant to be doing there. And in the dream, he sees some kind of staff and whispering, and he's shown a vision of the other wizard as well. We'll be honest on this, the stranger scenes so far feel really weak, slow and boring. It just doesn't feel like there's a lot going on. 
I think, I want to say, a bit of butter spread too thinly on bread. They haven't really landed. Lovely as the Harfords were, they just didn't feel right. I, I don't blame the actors for that. I definitely blame the writing. It's obviously somebody wanted to put Hobbit type people in just to sort of appeal to the masses, but they haven't really given them any real tangible storylines. So I was a bit annoyed that Poppy turned up. Uh, I could have tolerated just the stranger and Eleanor carrying on, but the Poppy turned up as well. It was just like, oh, for God's sake. And then the fact that she swiped the map from her own people and it happened to tell them how to get through the deserts of Rune. It was just like, oh. And it just felt like an excuse for Poppy to be there. And it just didn't work for me. And then him sort of doing some magic and then loads of beetles came out and said, oh yes, we've got something to eat. Great. It just didn't work for me. We've still got the ladies of face coverings for the elven scenes. Obviously they're servants. It's a little bit... I don't know, I like to see people's faces. It feels like they're faceless. It feels like they're, they've got no personality. But there's a lot more elves with long hair. In fact, I see that Elrond's still got the short hair, but then it does look like some of the fan artwork that I've seen online. There are some artists that have portrayed elves with shorter hair, and it does look a little bit more like that. So interesting but Elrond's still got shortish hair although it's slightly longer perhaps as he becomes an elven lord the hair might grow he'll uh, have more time to uh, take care of it i do like that Elrond wasn't afraid to make tough decisions i do like that Elrond seems to have grown a bit of a backbone and that he's a little bit more forceful i think that was a nice balance because we know he's a nice guy underneath but also he does have to make very tough decisions and it's good to see him being prepared to make those decisions because obviously in the future he's going to have a whole lot more to do. We get another moment with the stranger and his companions. Elves get together for a lament because it looks like they're going to have to leave the world because they can't preserve their realms so they're going to have to leave and so there's this sort of nice song that Gilgalad sings and it is quite a nice but haunting song I, I really didn't mind that it did feel very elven and it did feel really sad and it, it did work that i must admit so far in this episode the elven scenes nailed it and then i think also it's ironic that when elrond is so against the rings that he will eventually become a ring bearer himself i find that interesting the whole precedence of why they're leaving Middle Earth doesn't quite match up with Tolkien's reasons why they're leaving Middle Earth. I feel there's a little bit of disparity there, which I don't think was needed. I think that the Tolkien's reason for them leaving is totally valid. I don't think they needed to play with that, and they have, and I don't think it works. Right at the end of the episode, we have good old Halbrand turning up in Region, just like a little bad penny and we know it's all gonna go downhill from there overall it was enjoyable although there were bits in it that didn't interest me there was enough of it to keep my attention i would say it was an improvement on the previous season and overall i would give it a seven out of ten for the first episode so now i need to go and watch the next episode I've already watched these twice. I know I'm way behind doing reviews than everyone else. But I'm doing it on my time scale, not anyone else's. So um, I hope you have enjoyed my little take on things. If you have, just uh, pop me a little like and perhaps subscribe. Uh, should we get some tarot again? Done soon. But it depends on when I can fit things around the family. So I shall love you and leave you for the moment. And take care look after yourselves and mind how you go.